there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Karen demands I rate her looks on a 0 through 10 scale, so I gave her a 0. After that, am I the jerk for shutting off my fiancé's computer while he was playing video games in my son's room at 1.30 in the morning? And after that, stop blaming the person I'm training for the rookie mistakes he's been making? Very well. Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen gets a 0 rating. Oh, stop it. You know you want this, Reddit boy. Rawr. So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Karen demands I rate her looks on a 0 through 10 scale, so I gave her a 0. I'm 19, female, and my 18-year-old brother is apparently a very beautiful person. He gets complimented 24-7 by all kinds of people and everyone adores him. He's modeled and all that jazz as well. You'd think our mom would be happy or proud of him, but no, she's jealous. I don't know why, considering he gets his looks from her, but she sees him as competition. Like, I'm sure she loves him, but she acts like a bitter kid sometimes. She comments about how she's skinnier and prettier and got more attention back in the day and more. It's insane. She literally copies his every move while also criticizing him at the same time. My brother doesn't really care and pretends that she's joking around, but he's starting to really fixate on how he looks, so it's definitely bothering him. My final straw was when my mom dragged him and herself over to me and made me rate them both out of 10. I tried ignoring her and brushing her aside, but she wouldn't let me leave and kept asking me to rate them. I had it and was like, goodness mom, you're a zero and you've been a zero since the second you started acting so crazy. She went quiet and began to cry and then said that I'm a horrible excuse for a daughter. She wants me to apologize and hasn't left her bedroom since. I feel guilty because my mom is a really hard-headed person and she never cries. My dad, who thinks all this is ridiculous and fights with her because of her behavior, even thinks that I was too harsh. I'm just exhausted. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk. I hope you and your brother can set some boundaries with her. OP. I hope my brother can too. He's starting to see her as competition as well, unfortunately. Not the jerk. Her behavior is ridiculous and possibly harmful to your brother. And you had a point. No matter how outwardly pretty she is, acting like this makes her a zero. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or their mom? Please let us know. Maybe get your mom some ice cream that she can binge on while she cries and watches Golden Girls. I actually like that show, so don't at me. Am I the jerk for shutting off my fiancé's computer while he was playing his video games in my son's room at 1.30 in the morning? When we moved back to my family's house about a year ago, my fiancé set up his gaming PC station in my elementary school age son's room since we have such a limited amount of space. He's not my son's biological father. My fiancé and I have a baby and who sleeps in our room, so there's literally no space at all in our bedroom. I agreed to let him have his computer and desk in my son's room as it was the only room out of the two with just enough space. My fiancé has always claimed that gaming stops him from going out to bars or spending extra money we don't have. Since moving back, I stressed to him that I don't want him to play late at night because I don't want him to disrupt my son's sleep and affect his circadian rhythm. Over the past year, my fiancé hasn't respected my request as he's continued to play video games till pretty late at night sometimes up to 4 a.m. on weekends. Whenever I bring it up to my fiancé, my son always insists that he doesn't mind that my fiancé is playing games in his room. My son probably enjoys the company, but he also makes a pillow wall around his face to block the bright lights every night. It bothers me since I know my son could be getting a better night's sleep without a mouse and keyboard clicking away with constant bright flashing lights from the computer monitor. About a month ago, I caught my fiancé vaping in my son's room while playing video games while my son was asleep. I lost my marbles at my fiancé and told him how he doesn't give a crap about my son's health or sleep. He claimed he doesn't believe in circadian rhythm. I made a very big deal out of this and gave him an ultimatum that he needed to stop gaming late at night and to never vape in my son's room again or we're done. He promised to stop and has been pretty consistent by stopping at 10pm and not vaping that I'm aware of. Well, last night, I heard mumbling from my son's room, which woke me up around 1.30 a.m., and it brought rage to me. I demanded that my fiancé get off his game, and he said he was almost done, just 20 more minutes until the match was over. I told him to get out of my son's room, or I would be turning off the computer. 
I ended up pushing the power button to turn it off. Am I the jerk for turning off my fiancé's computer during his match? I know my son claims he doesn't care that my fiancé plays in his room. As his mom, I want my son to get a good night's rest. Additionally, my fiancé never wakes up early to help me out with our kid and sleeps until 10.30 a.m. or later every single weekend. Edit. Fiancé saw this post. He is actively packing his stuff and leaving. Not the jerk on that occasion, but you are the jerk for ever allowing him in your son's room to play video games all night and disturb your son. Plus the vaping? What? He's not even his dad. I ditched the guy pronto. Your kid deserves better. Not the jerk. Why are you staying with this man? He has to play video games or he'll spend all the money and go out to the bar? Nope. Either he pulls his head out of his rear and behaves like a responsible adult who respects you and your kids or he finds a new place to live. Those are his options. OP. I don't know why I'm staying anymore. I feel miserable and do 90% of all parenting and of all the cooking and cleaning etc. Video game addictions are real. He really needs help. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her fiancé? Please let us know. What a disrespectful dude. Glad to hear he hit the road. Stop blaming the person I'm training for the rookie mistakes he's been making? Very well. I used to work as a temp in a cardboard factory. I started out assisting the machine operators in their work, but after the person who managed the materials, cutting forms, printing stamps, and ink, who henceforth shall be referred to as Dave, was forced to take a week off, paid vacation he was forced to take before the end of the year, and the end of the year rush was coming up, and things went south because the floor managers couldn't keep up with his job and their own at the same time, the company decided we needed a second person to do Dave's job to avoid situations like that in the future. They tested several people by having them work together with Dave for a couple of hours, and apparently I was the only one who did a decent job, and so I was told that Dave would be training me. I was never asked if I was interested, I didn't even know they were looking for someone to help Dave until I arrived at work one Monday and my schedule said I would be working with Dave. Of course, I didn't mind, because since I was already capable of helping operate 8 of the 10 machines in the factory, I figured this was a great way to further solidify an actual contract with the company. Now, during his week off, Dave had met a woman and they had started dating. She would constantly text him while he was at work and it showed in his productivity. Of course, COO figured his drop in productivity was because I was slowing him down. As time went on, Dave's girlfriend moved in with him. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet, but the factory had a two-shift system, early shift and late shift. Most of us worked in rotating shifts, but Dave had a fixed early shift because he had to be there on Monday mornings. Now, this meant Dave and his girlfriend could never go out on weekends and even had to go to bed quite early so Dave requested to be put back on rotating shifts once he had finished training me. The COO said he would look into it, but kept giving Dave excuses, so Dave started interviewing for another job. Then came the day me and Dave were called into the COO's office and got yelled at for not pulling our weight and stuff like that. One of the things mentioned was repeated tardiness. Dave couldn't deny that one. He had overslept several times in the last few months, but I had only been tardy once because of a flat tire. So wanting to set the record straight, I tried to interject about my flat tire and the COO snapped at me to keep my trap shut while he's talking. So after his rant and he dismisses us from his office, I once again bring up the flat tire and then he just snaps at me again that I should have just avoided having a flat tire. That was the last drop for Dave. He got home, wrote his letter of resignation, mailed it to the COO and accepted one of the job offers he had gotten that week. For the next three months, I'm stuck doing all the work on my own. Also during this time, due to a change in the laws in my country, I might become homeless unless I get a contract. So I start asking the COO for a contract since I've been there two and a half years as a temp at this point. Just like with Dave, he keeps giving me excuses. After an incident with them refusing any vacation time request I put in that included a Monday, they finally gave me someone to train to be my second. Let's call him Abdul. About a month after I started training Abdul, I get called into the floor manager's office. Apparently, a mistake was made somewhere, and he asks me how it happened. Now that was the first week I was letting Abdul work independently without me constantly telling him what to do. So I tell the floor manager that Abdul had done that job and I had not yet had the chance to inspect his work. The manager grumbles but just dismisses me. A week later, I get called in again for a similar situation. So after I point out that Abdul is learning and mistakes will be made, 
So this time, the manager blows up at me that I have to stop blaming everything on Abdul, and if I blame one more mistake on Abdul being a rookie, he's getting me fired. This is where the compliance comes in. Around this time, me and Abdul were put in opposing shifts. My first order of business every day would be to double check all of Abdul's work and fix any mistakes. I couldn't inform him of his mistakes, so he kept making them. Abdul also started to get sneaky. You see, part of our tasks had to be done in an area of the factory where only the two of us would frequently go. So Abdul would do all of the work that was to be done where people could see him work, leaving me with all the tasks behind the scenes, meaning I was never anywhere to be found. We also had these big barrels of ink, which were hooked up to a machine that mixed the basic colors of ink into other colors. Abdul had always refused to change these barrels when they were empty. He would usually state he hadn't had time, even though making sure those barrels aren't empty was a priority job. This eventually all culminates into a moment about eight months after Dave left where I am once again called into the COO's office. I'm thinking I'm finally getting my contract after three years as a temp. I'm also convinced Abdul got a contract the week before, though Abdul and the COO have always denied that. Instead, I'm told I'm fired. The COO also goes out of his way to inform me that he's been wanting to fire me for six months now because he blames me for Dave quitting, but was asked not to by the floor managers until I had trained someone to replace me, and they considered Abdul to be ready to do the job now. He also told me that he did appreciate the work I did, he just had a problem with me personally. After my meeting with the COO, I make my round of the factory to inform my coworkers that I've been fired and to say goodbye. The look on Abdul's face was pure panic. He suddenly realized that despite me demonstrating how to change those ink barrels, he had never actually done it himself and as such didn't remember how to do it. A week after I left, I got a message from one of my former coworkers that the entire factory was looking to go to the COO's office and demand they rehire me because Abdul was not only doing a poor job, but he was also being a megalomaniac. I told her not to bother because if they did rehire me, it would only make the COO hate me even more. Several months after, another former coworker informed me that not even a month after I was fired, Abdul was demoted back to assistant machine operator, and one of the floor managers had to take over his tasks full time. Am I the jerk for telling my wife I shouldn't be poor each month while she still has a ton of money? Hey everyone, me, 35 male, and my wife, 36 female, have been married for three years. I have two kids from my first marriage who are 17 and 13, and she has four kids who are 17, 15, 12, and 8. I have 50-50 custody of my kids. She has full custody of her kids, and their dad is way behind on child support, so she provides all their financial support. I want to preface this by saying my wife and I keep our finances separate. My wife makes more than double what I do. She gets $50 an hour, and I get $22 an hour. It's always been like that. We agreed when we moved in together, we would split the bills equitably based on our incomes. She ended up covering basically all household expenses, mortgage, utilities, cable, internet, food, etc. I would cover one week's worth of groceries and my car payment, car and motorcycle insurance, gas, cell phone, vapes, etc. This all changed when I wrecked my car earlier this year. I went shopping with my wife for a new car and really wanted an SUV. My wife made me look at cars too because they're a lot cheaper but I had my mind set. When we sat down to finance it, they told me my payments would be about $850 a month versus about $380 a month for the car. I decided on the SUV and my wife seemed upset. Anyway, my insurance readjusted after the accident and with my car payment and other expenses, I barely have $100 in expendable income each month. My wife has fun money and still throws a lot into savings and projects around the house. I was speaking about being frustrated about this with my sister and she mentioned that a sign of financial mistreatment is limiting access to household money. So I approached my wife and said I wanted to combine our accounts, that I shouldn't live like a pauper while she has money to throw around and she told me that it was my own decision that led me to not have a lot of disposable income and that if we wanted to discuss a budget for fun money for each of us, we could. I got really upset and told her it isn't loving or right for her to have so much left while I barely have two pennies to rub together. Things got heated and I'm staying at my sister's for the weekend. I don't think wanting things to be even is so wrong, but my wife is kind of right that if I got a cheaper car, I would have had more money. So, am I the jerk? You're the jerk. 
Your income covers one week of food for your combined family of eight, and the rest goes to things just for you. Your car payment, your insurance, your vapes, etc. Who pays for the kids' activities, clothes, shoes, etc.? She's covering the roof over your head and the rest of the household bills, plus raising four kids with no child support and no financial help from you. This is not financial mistreatment. Her not handing over money to you for fun when you don't take on responsibilities and you make bad financial decisions on a car payment is not financial mistreatment. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his wife? Please let us know. There's a reason they don't teach financial education in school. A population of generally financially illiterate people are much easier to capitalize on. You want to fire me to save a buck? Go right ahead. So I recently met up with my uncle, and while talking about my major, programming computer science, he told me a story of when he got a promotion, his current position, by getting fired. Several years ago, my uncle, Dan, had a jerk of a boss who would always flaunt his status of being a manager to the lower ranked employees and would also be critical of them for the smallest things, taking two or three minutes too long on breaks, talking to your coworker for even a second, or even taking a sip from your water bottle at your desk. My uncle and his coworkers hated this guy, but they loved the job, so they just put up with him for the time being. Uncle Dan told me it was so bad, nobody wanted to even interact with him outside of work, and he wasn't invited to any parties or get-togethers either. One day, boss decides to save money for the company by firing Dan for poor performance, and tells him the reason why is because they can rehire for cheaper. Now Dan is a calm and logical man. He's very skilled in programming and has years of experience under his belt by that point in his life. So he knows there would be loads of companies fighting for him. Dan didn't put up a fight about it and just cleared out his desk that day and a month later, while looking for other jobs, he was called by boss telling him he can have his job back. And when Dan refused, because he had a few offers, boss revealed that he was in trouble for firing him with the president. Uncle Dan explained to me that he coded the system they used to distribute assignments and organize tasks, which earned him the president's respect for his skill and expertise. So when he found out he was replaced with someone who, as Dan put it, wouldn't know his backside from an array, he was understandably livid, especially since he didn't hear about it until just now. So Boss was forced to offer Dan his position and a raise to convince him to come back, was demoted, and was even more ostracized for the way he looked down on people in the past. It was a funny story. He gets fired and then is given an even better position and pay because his boss was trying to save the company money. He still has that position today and his pay has only gotten better due to his skills. But the boss couldn't stand being on the same level as the lesser employees he mocked, so he's not there anymore. Karen asked me to babysit for her today while I was working on a boat. Was on a client's boat to take measurements for a job they'd like me to do. The place they're docked is alongside a lovely sidewalk that's open to the public. I was on the front deck when I heard a family walk by. I was aware of them, but I didn't look up until... Excuse me! It spooked me, as they were so close, but I looked up. A mother and her kid were standing there on the sidewalk in front of the boat. Sorry, you snuck up on me. Can I help you? Sometimes people stop to ask me directions to a bathroom or are curious about what I'm doing, so randomly striking up a conversation isn't uncommon and I'm happy to help and make a bit of conversation. Hey, can you watch my kid for a minute? No explanation, no greeting, nothing. I was stunned into silence for a second while my brain tried to process. The mother took this time to interject before I could reply. It's okay, she can just hang out on your boat with you. She what? Her kid looked to be around five or so. Before she could start walking toward the pier, I finally gained enough brain power to speak. Ah, no, sorry. This isn't even my boat. Oh, well, whose boat is it? Like it's relevant. This is my client's boat. Can she come on? Ma'am, I'm working, I said, raising my voice a bit, holding up a bunch of measuring tools. It's just for a minute, she urged. I was appalled. Sorry, no can do. I was about to say more, but she interrupted before I could continue. Well, can you get off the boat and watch her here then? I gave her another stunned look. I'm working, I said a bit slower, and I'm sure my boss wouldn't appreciate me watching a stranger's kid while I'm on the clock. Again, I was about to say more, but her kid was whining and pulling on her mother's hand. Fine, she snapped suddenly, taking her kid away up the steps. Not gonna lie, it was really odd and unnerving, and my heart was beating really fast. 
I'm legitimately shocked. I should ask the owner of the boat if they can reverse their boat into the space next time so I don't have to face the general public while working anymore. Am I the jerk for tricking my husband into eating the food I cooked by making him think his mom sent it? My husband, Mickey, loves his mom's cooking. He always praises her for the food she makes and even mentioned it in his groom speech at the wedding. I consider myself a good cook. In fact, I'm going to just say that I'm even better than his mom. But the problem is, he doesn't even want to try my cooking or give me a chance to prove it. I thought this would change after marriage, but five months later, nothing's changed. What does he eat if he's not eating what I'm cooking? He's requested that his mom send him a meal every day to eat for dinner after getting off of work, except for the weekend where we go over to her house and we eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert there. Every single day, he'd come home and ask if his mom sent him a meal. I grew irritated of this, and whenever I try to offer him to taste any of the wasted food that I cook, he'd lay in bed and say he's full. So I came up with an idea. I cooked him the same meal his mom sent him that day and put it aside till he got home. He asked if his mom sent a meal for dinner, and I said yes, and served him my own version of the meal, not hers. He didn't notice anything different. He ate the whole thing with no hesitation while I sat across from him, asking him questions about how good the meal was. He went on and on, praising it, saying how perfect, exceptional it was, and how it was just what he needed after a long day at work. I smiled and said, You're welcome. He froze and looked at me for a minute, looked down at the plate, then back at me and said, Wait, you made this, didn't you? I said, With my own hand and from scratch. His face suddenly went red and he got upset and said that this was not cool. I told him he never... <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? I told him he never even gave me a chance to show him how good my cooking is and that he's probably just used to his mom's cooking and is rejecting any other alternatives, which is unfair to me. He said that I shouldn't have lied to him and basically tricked him into eating food that he had no idea where it came from. I said he liked it and admitted that it was good, so what's the issue? He got up from his seat threw the napkin and said that I was unbelievable, then walked out. He got quiet the rest of the evening, then posted about it on his Facebook in a vague post about being tricked into eating someone's food like that. I felt guilty and bad, thinking maybe I really shouldn't have done this, but I was frustrated with how he kept turning down every meal I tried to cook him and then say, no thanks, I prefer my mom's food. Am I the jerk? Info. Why would you marry someone who refuses to eat your food and makes his mother make him dinner every day. Also, does his mom really want to make his food for the rest of his life, or has he made up a story to get her to do it? Also, what will he eat when his mom passes and he still is a grown adult? Not the jerk. First of all, stop going to his mother's every weekend to eat. He can if he wants to, but you don't need to. Come on, girl, have some respect for yourself. Let his mother cook for him and be free of that chore. What you don't see is that he's manipulating you. He's letting you know every single day that you are not good enough for him. He prefers his mother over you. He's doing this to destroy your self-esteem, and he does it on purpose. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her husband? Please let us know. Life's too short to spend it with people who don't respect you. You know Karen stay dropping facts, bruh. Skirt, skirt. Karen, those comics are worth a fortune. One of my all-time favorite stories to tell when hanging out with other comic book geeks. Backstory. So I used to be a huge comic book fan and buyer. I hung out at the local comic book shop for hours at a time, a couple of times a week, not counting shipment day, and talked shop with the owner, the guy who ran the shop, and the myriad of regular customers. Shop owner I'll dub Mr. Albertson. Guy who ran the shop will be Jeff, other monikers as people get introduced. The comic book shop was located on a busy street and the back part of this shop was a living quarters for Mr. Albertson. There was no public restroom in the shop area. Now Mr. Albertson was a very nice, intelligent guy, someone I called friend and respected. Sadly though, he had issues when it came to hygiene. The bathroom in his living quarters was just plain nasty. As I had worked in rental property make ready for over 20 years, when I say nasty, I mean, get the flamethrower and burn it nasty. I knew this because I fixed the faucet in the bathroom once. Then I immediately went home and took a nice hot bath. Jeff, understandably, refused to use this bathroom. He would hold it until lunchtime and use the public restroom at a local restaurant. Afterwards, he would wait until he got home. 
Sometimes, however, Jeff just couldn't wait. The need was too urgent. When this happened, he would close the shop and take a break. Set up. One day while I was in the shop, I could tell Jeff was in some amount of distress. I asked him what was wrong and he informed me that he really had to use the restroom as something he ate was not agreeing with him. But he couldn't just close the shop due to the fact the shop's biggest customer was expected to come in at any time now to pick up his weekly order. I thought it over and told Jeff that I could stay and watch the store. I knew Mr. Big Bucks always paid with a check, so if he came in for his order while Jeff was away, I would simply tell him the amount Jeff always pre-calculated on the previous order invoice. Then I would take the check and slide it under the cash register. Jeff knew me very well from many years of hanging out in the shop and my family's reputation for honesty and integrity was well known. Jeff readily agreed and made a run for it. Five minutes later, Mr. Big Bucks walks in the door and asks where Jeff is. I tell him Jeff had to answer nature's call really, really badly. Therefore, I was watching the store until he got back. I went behind the counter, pulled out Mr. Big Bucks' weekly superhero addiction delivery and the previews invoice order form. Mr. Big Bucks checked the order, approved the invoice amount, and wrote out the check. I then slid it under the cash register. Now, normally, Mr. Big Bucks is in a hurry, grabs his order, and leaves. But today, he was checking the inventory when Mr. Action walked in the door. Mr. Action is not just a regular, but a respected dealer in comic books and collectibles. Mr. Big Bucks and Mr. Action struck up a conversation. I just leaned against the counter and continued to read the latest issue of Amazing Spider-Man. A few pages later, a nasty scowl walked in the door, followed a second later by the face wearing it. It was a 30-ish something woman, hair pulled back, tight in a pigtail, pink sweatshirt with pink across the chest. She was carrying a cardboard box that looked like it had been in a flood. You, give me $1,000, she said as she heaved the box onto the counter. Excuse me? I replied while flinching back from the stench of mold coming from the box. Give me $1,000. Um, why? You buy comics. These are comics, so give me my money. More than a little thrown off by the demand for money and the attitude, I stuttered out a response. First off, I don't work here. Second, this shop isn't a dealer in old comics. Miss Nasty Scowl cut me off. I know very well you work here. My boyfriend told me that the fat guy who works behind the counter would give me money for these old comics. He also told me not to let you cheat me. I want $1,000 now. I looked down at my belly. If Gabriel Iglesias was around back then, he would say I was just shy of being fluffy. Look lady, I don't work here. The regular fat guy is running. A snort and a guffle came from the comic racks. Shut it, you two, I said over my shoulder. I don't work here. I'm just watching the shop while the regular fat guy who runs the store is out on an errand. He'll be back soon. But even still, he doesn't buy old comics, I reiterated. Miss Nasty Scowl actually growled at me. Even if there is another fat guy who normally runs this place, you are here now. You are behind the counter now. So you will give me my money now. Mr. Action tried to say something, but he was cut off by Miss Nasty Scowl screaming, You shut up. I wasn't talking to you, you ugly old jerk. Well, I've been told I have the patience of a saint, but I got my limits. I looked at a visibly irritated Mr. Big Bucks and a now steaming mad Mr. Action. Suddenly, I had a thought. That thought bumped into a few others, and within seconds, I had a funny idea. Turning back to Miss Nasty Scowl, I said in a calm voice, You're right, miss. I apologize. You see, we get people coming in here trying to sell fake old comics. We have to be careful, you understand? Whatever. Just give me my money. Let me take a look at what I'm sure is a fine collection, I said with my best shoveling it deep smile. When I opened the old cardboard box's top, I nearly gagged at the smell of mold. Inside was indeed comics. Comics that looked like they may have been stored in a cellar that flooded. They were covered in mold, sticking together, and just in completely rotten shape. After flipping through a few that were not stuck together, I let out a loud gasp of shock. My god, I yelled. Mr. Action, come here quick. Look what she has. I'm fine over here, he said while pinching his nose. No, look, I firmly said while turning my head and giving a conspirator's wink and smirk at Mr. Action. Curious as to what I was up to, Mr. Action followed my prompt and came behind the counter. 
to Miss Nasty Scal. You're in luck today. This is Mr. Action. He's our local authority on comic book appraisals. From what I've only glanced at, this collection of yours is worth way more than a measly $1,000. I'd say it's worth $20,000 at least. Right, Mr. Action? Mr. Action has known me for many years. He was, in fact, one of my teachers in high school and had seen my sense of humor in action many times. He had no idea where I was going with this, but he knew it would go someplace ridiculously funny. For us, at least. Good lord! These are Casper the Friendly Ghost comics, Richie Rich! And these, these are Archie comics! Giving Miss Nasty Scowl his most eager expression. Do you have any idea how rare these comics are? No! Are they worth more than $1,000? Way more, I declared. In fact, Mr. Big Bucks, didn't you once buy an Archie Comics collection at auction? What did you pay for it? 10 to 12 grand? Uh, I'm sorry, miss, but we are just a small town collector shop. We simply do not have the budget to purchase this expensive collection. You need to take these to one of the big stores in the city. Mr. Action, what is the name of that dealer you are always complaining about? You know, the one who you said stole clients from you? I asked, knowing he would get my prompt. Sure enough, a nasty smile crossed his face. Mr. Burns, let me write down his address for you, my dear, Mr. Action said as he reached for a pen and a scrap piece of paper. Now, with a dress in hand and a greedy smile plastered on her face, Miss Nasty Scal carried her box of moldy comics out of the store. What the heck was that all about? Mr. Big Bucks asked, still confused. Mr. Action and I set about explaining the prank we just pulled on the woman and a crooked dealer, both Mr. Action and I had run afoul of on separate occasions. Twenty minutes later, Jeff returned. The three of us ensured he was okay. When he asked if anything happened while he was gone, the three of us just shook our heads, and I said, nope. The next week, I went in to hang out with Jeff for a bit. Jeff looked at me for a second, then said, funny thing happened yesterday. A really upset woman came in here screaming about how our other employee lied to her. I thought she was talking about the owner, Mr. Albertson, at first, but then she said he was another fat guy like me. I told her I was the only employee. What did she say then? I asked. Nothing. She just screamed like a maniac and stormed out, leaving a box full of worthless old multi comics. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.